I've been working on restoring this old drill press and while I have nearly all the original parts, there is one missing. It's a hand wheel that holds the handles onto the quill feed. I've modeled the part on the computer and it will be very easy to make any sort of knob, but this is quite an iconic piece to the drill press. So I'm going to try and replicate the original. And that was made from Bakelite shown here on my mate Corin's machine. And that's also where I got the dimensions from. I've got my plans ready and I'll make mine from aluminium and I'll blacken that somehow later on. I'll start by facing the bottom and then I'll drill and thread the hole that will be used for screwing it onto the machine. I've only ever single point threaded once before and this is the first time with an internal thread. And by the way, the thread is 3 quarter 20 as the machine is old and mainly imperial. And when I say mainly, there's a bit of a mix and some parts are imperial and some are metric. So I'm guessing it was made in the 1950s or 60s as Australia transitioned to metric. Anyway, the threading went very well and that's just about perfect. I should have chamfered the hole before threading, but I'll do it now anyway. Next, I'll start turning it down by making two shoulders and then I'll blend between the two by turning down a curve. I'm doing this section completely by eye, but I do have a good idea what I'm trying to achieve. I'm removing so much waste first and then I'll slow the lathe down and use a rounded form tool to refine it. Again, I'm just doing this by eye as well with the form tool. I've never turned anything like this on the lathe before and it's pretty fun just feeling my way through it. I'm really surprised how well that came out and I was expecting to file the last bit but it really doesn't need it at all, it looks fine straight off the tool and while I have that tool in I use that to break the edge. I reversed it in the chuck to turn down the outside which will help me with the next step. I'm sticking a template to the knob which I can line up pretty easily now that the outside is the correct diameter. It may not be 100% accurate but it's accurate enough just for a hand wheel. I thought of a few different methods to do this but I opted for the grinder. The only downside is it gets hot quickly so I need to sit it in water every now and again for a few seconds. I thought about using the rotary table on the Miller machine to cut the radius, but I'll have it done in the time it would have taken to set that up. And I also thought about using the whole pattern feature on the Mills DRO, but then I don't have a cutter with the correct radius, so the grinder made sense. I've got it back in the lathe and I'll start turning down the top face. I'll get it down to the correct thickness first and then turn a couple of features onto the face. Next I'll turn a shoulder around the edge and then I'll change the angle of the tool post and use the compound to chamfer that off. I just need to take the center out and I'm nearly there. Even though the chamfer looks good as it is, it needs rounding over to better match the original.
I'm very happy with that. Next, I'll do a little sanding and round over all the edges. To make it authentic, I need to add the wall down logo in the center. I'll trace a photo I took of the side of the drill press, and then from that, I can resize it and print out a template. I'll be using the technique I showed in a recent video where I carve a mold and then use JB Weld to cast the lettering onto the knob. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link above. I did think about 3D printing the whole knob, including the lettering. I don't have one, but I thought about maybe getting somebody else to print one for me, but I reckon the aluminium one will be far more robust. Although the drill press is pretty old, wall down do actually still make a drill press, which is almost the same thing. They're now Brobo wall down, and the knob is actually available to buy, but the logo isn't the same as it has a B and a W on it. I could have just bought one of those, but I thought it'd be much more fun to make one. That's not too bad, but the lettering is a bit thin, so I'll carve it a touch wider, and I'm managing with my V-gouge, but really it is a bit too big for this. JB Well takes about six hours to set, so I left it overnight. It's not perfect, but with a bit of a cleanup and some paint, I think it'll look okay. I'm roughing up the aluminium so the paint will have something to bond to. I also cleaned it off camera with some solvent, and the primer is an etch primer, which is suitable for use on non-ferrous metals. If the paint doesn't stay on, then I'll strip it and powder coat it next. I did think about ordering a cheap powder coat setup, but it wouldn't have got here in time. I think I may still get one anyway, so if you have one, let me know if you think they're worth it for small projects like this. Even though I didn't show it, I did build up the coats. I'm not quite sure how many, but maybe five or six. I reckon that turned out fantastic and it was the icing on the cake for the restoration. It wouldn't have been quite the same without it. And the restoration isn't too far away, so look out for that video as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.